Michael. And this is Uplift Stitches. This is a place where we talk about cross-stitching, crafting, board games, and all the things that make our hearts happy. Yeah, and uh, so this is uh, floss tube number five. Yeah. Which seems crazy, but... <laughs> um, and so this is, uh, what, it's Tuesday, January 2nd. Yep. Uh, and the new 2024. year. 2024. <laughs> Happy New Year. Happy New Year to everybody. I hope everybody is well and had a, a good holiday break. Yeah. Um, we have a lot to share with you today. Um, a lot. A lot of life things happened. We did things. We um, stitched. We did a lot of stitching. We had I lots did some of, sewing. We played board games. Yeah. Just a whole bunch of stuff to share. Uh, a lot of projects, future plans to talk about for this year. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, it was just a whole bunch of stuff. Yeah. Um, so yeah. What? Uh, I guess we could start. Well, if you're new here, welcome. But yeah. We're glad to see you. We are glad to see you and <laughs> um, have you as a part of our community. Hopefully you'll want to stay and subscribe and like our video. Yeah. If you're a returning friend, hi. How are you? Yeah. It's great to see you. <laughs> it's good to see you again. Uh, thank you so much for all of your kind comments. Uh, well wishes on our last video. We appreciate that so much. Yes. We read every comment and look forward to seeing all the, the comments and things you have to share with us. It's been such a great experience um, getting to know you a little better, sharing a little bit more about our, ourselves and just becoming more of a part of this community. Yeah. It's a great community. I'm, I'm glad to be doing this with you. Yeah. And I would count it among some of the top things that happened last year. It definitely. I mean, <laughs> I had no idea if you were going to start this and when you said you had started one, I was super excited. So. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I guess. We so can, here we are. Here we are. Ready for a new year. Ready for a new year and <laughs> ready to to get started, I guess. Uh, yeah. Uh, I guess we'll start with live events. Yeah. Well, there's been quite a bit that happened. It's It was a busy month. So we, st we our last one, if I remember, was the beginning of December. Yeah. So the day that we recorded, I'm sorry if our video was a little bit higgly pickledy. Yeah. We didn't have <laughs> a lot of planning. We had a lot of going on and didn't have a lot of we plans. We sort of realized it was going to be the only day we would have to film. Yeah. <laughs> So a lot, a lot of the prep we usually do just didn't happen, and we just kind of flew by the seat of our pants. Yeah. And it That just... night, we went out with Michael's family to look at Christmas lights. It's one of the traditions that we have with his family. Yes, yeah, so I look forward to that every year. We used to go to a place called Our Lady of Snows, mm -hmm. and uh, just recently, a lot of the last few years, we decided to branch out because it's gotten so big there, they start doing two lines, and you just can't see so the lights So you can't see well. half of the lights, so it's not... Not as fun. No. So this year we actually ended up going to, what's the park Oh, was I that? don't remember the name of the park, but it was in O'Fallon, Missouri. And it's just a beautiful lights display. A lot of different uh, community uh, organizations sponsor some of the displays there. Mm -hmm. And it just was really, really beautiful, great place to go. Mom loved it. Uh, that's also important. <laughs> Um, so yeah, that was, that was the night after, right after we recorded this, that happened. Yes. And then so, the next day we went to a craft fair with my parents. Um, there's a high school by their house that has a craft fair at the beginning of December every year, and we had a lot of fun doing We had that. a lot of fun. Uh, I looked around a lot. Uh, I don't think we brought anything. The home. only thing I remember bringing home, which was the first thing I saw when I got there, was the kettle corn, which I absolutely <laughs> love. If there's kettle corn, Michael's going to get it. Yes. That, that's on my list of things to get no matter what. Yeah. And you got some hot chocolate bombs. Oh, I did, yeah. Those have been really good. So yeah. this, this lady makes them herself yeah, every her year. Yeah, her Keisha. And just, they're absolutely great. So I got... Quite a few. I got one for my mom for Christmas. It was great. So yeah. that was that was the whole. We weekend. only brought home delicious things. <laughs> yes. So it was a very busy weekend, and we. we it had... was a lot of fun. I came home with treasures that day. My parents went through all of their finished projects, and they let me take home all of the ones that need to be framed. So I have some fun work to do this year. Um, it's the kind of. A, I don't know. I was excited. <laughs> I know you love framing stuff and she stuff. So. It was like a little bit of a gift to me to be able to spend some time doing that this year. So I'm looking forward to that. Thanks, Mom and Dad. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So that that was fun. Um, I don't, yeah, I don't think I came home with anything besides food stuff. No. <laughs> but I still loved it. It was fun to go see stuff and, you know, interact with people. It's always fun. Vendors are always fun to talk to. Mm -hmm. Um, and then the following weekend we had a game day. Oh, that's right. With some of our friends. Yeah. Some of our friends had us over. We spent all day gaming. Oh um, my gosh. We got there at 10 a.m. and left at 10 p.m. And we just played games the whole time. Played games and ate. We had short breaks for eating and then <laughs> more gaming. Yeah. It was a lot of fun. It was good to visit with them and play. Yeah. So that that's always fun. And then, um, I think that was it for that week. And we, the other one we just went, we went to see your parents. But yeah. So that next week, Michael, um, had to work on his final project for yes. a class that he's taking. And he's also an adjunct professor. So he's teaching a course. I'm teaching and taking classes. And I had those finals time for both classes. So I had 
projects to finish. I had mm-hmm. grading to do that had to be done by that Monday or Tuesday. Mm-hmm. So mom went, uh, Mel went over to her mom's. Yeah, and... so I took the opportunity to go and spend a few days with my parents. Uh, my mom and I had a little antique mall adventure. We went and found some treasures which we brought home and uh we spent some time watching movies and visiting and stitching it was a really nice relaxing time together while michael was working hard at home while i was working she was having fun it happens sometimes it does but it was good Um, it was very good i got everything done i needed to which was nice i had the quiet uh, to work so yeah it, it worked out well yeah um and then the following weekend, we actually had a event I gave her for her, our anniversary. Yeah. I got her t- us tickets to the Trans-Siberian Orchestra, and we went to see that that Sunday. Mm-hmm. Um, and it was a pretty wild show. <laughs> there was, I knew there was going to be lots of I didn't of know lights. what to expect. I mean, I've heard some of their songs. Uh, sometimes I'll listen. There's one of the local radio stations in St. Louis that plays Christmas music between Thanksgiving and New Year's. And so... I've heard some of their songs on that station. Especially when there's someone Christmas they usually play. Yeah. Um, and so this one was like the Ghost of Christmas Eve, is I think was the name mm-hmm. of the concert. But um, I knew there was going to be a lot of lights. They're known for their lights displays. I didn't know was there was going to be a lot of fire. Uh, there was fire everywhere. It was kind of fun. <laughs> it, was, it, was, it was a lot of fun. We have some pictures we'll share. We can insert on those yeah. while, while we're talking. But uh, I mean, there was all over the stage. There was fire shooting different directions. And then right behind us, it got really hot all of a sudden. And we both turned, and there was this huge, like, pyramid that was on fire and spinning. Like, right, like, a, probably right about 10, 15 it. feet from us. <laughs> and so it was it was pretty crazy. It was uh, a lot of fun. It was a lot of fun. It was memorable. I think we'll both treasure the memory of it for a long time. Yes. I, I'm glad <laughs> I got it. It was, it was on my list. I have a, a bucket list of things I, I slowly... Add to and then take off as I do them. So that was on it to yeah. see them. It was a great show and we had fun. Yeah. So um, that, that was the busiest part of that weekend. And then um, shortly before Christmas, we ended up getting, or shortly before that, we actually got some new glasses. Oh, yeah. We got um, new glasses. Which is not really a, a big thing, except that we, we didn't talk about it. We ended up picking out the We exact went same. at different times, at different days. We probably had different people help us. Yes. <laughs> we ended up with the same glasses, but just different colors. I mean... It's kind of fun. <laughs> um, I, I looked at her. I was like, those look so familiar. <laughs> because they are. Because they are. I mean, they're a slightly different shape, but. And slightly different Slightly colors, different color, but, but basically pretty much the same. The same, the same, ma- same you know, maker. Uh, so. so it'll bring us joy all year. <laughs> <laughs> um, so that was, that was kind of unexpected uh, fun thing yeah but uh, then, then we had christmas i actually got almost two weeks off yeah which was kind of nice very nice um you know working for a university does have some advantages um <laughs> yeah. and it was a busy christmas season for us as this is for most people i'm sure yeah we had kind of one day to ourselves we baked cookies we opened some presents between ourselves and just had kind of a little us time a little us time before we got into the chaos before we plunged in yeah basically. <laughs> Yeah, because we went to. Then we were gone for a full week. We were gone for a full week. We went to your parents first mm-hmm. on Christmas. Yeah, we spent Christmas a few Adam. days with my parents, and we opened presents with them, which was really fun. We watched movies. We ate all the we good food, food. We played some games. It was a nice time. It was a wonderful few days. And then, then we went to Michael's mom's. Yep. And spent a few days there. And opened presents with my family that yeah. that, that Christmas morning, and yeah. we went to midnight mass. We was, did, which was nice. We hadn't been in a while. No. Um, it was, it was a nice, nice, nice service and yeah, it was, it was, it was, it was nice. It was good. It was good to have time with your mom. She's kind of had a rough year. Um, she's lost a number of friends this year. Yeah. Um, so it was good been, to be able to spend some extra time with her this year. Yeah. yeah. It got me thinking a lot about past Christmases and some of my favorite Christmas times. Um, yeah. So, um, just kind of going there and back again, I guess I can talk a little bit about that, but <laughs> Um, I get, you know, my favorite Christmas growing up was actually, it had nothing to do with, uh, opening presents, although I got some fun presents growing up, <laughs> but it was actually going to midnight mass, which was kind of brought back, uh, some memories from that. I, you know, I remember going to midnight mass one year, I think it was probably seventh or eighth grade and, you know, coming out of the church and it was just snowing very gently. There was a light snow across everything and everything was kind of quiet and just being there with my family at the time. It's just, there was a feeling of comfort um, that kind of going to Midnight Mass this year brought back to me, which mm-hmm. was nice. So I thought I would share some of my, one of my favorite Christmas memories with, <laughs> with you guys. But um, 
I'm sure you, everybody has hopefully some of their own memories, whether if, whether if you celebrate Christmas or some other holiday. So yeah, we we got to spend some time with mom, and then and then we whisked away. <laughs> whisked away uh, start... <laughs> to visit. My brother lives in Florida, and his wife. Um, so we went and spent a few days with them, with and, my parents, and we opened more presents we with them. More presents. <laughs> Which was was fun, and we spent a lot of time mostly just gaming and puzzling, doing puzzle. Um, yeah, they had a huge two thousand piece puzzle, so we kind of spent a little bit of time working on that, visiting, eating, eating delicious food, played mini golf. We played mini golf. Michael was his champion of mini golf. I had two hole in ones, which I don't <laughs> I don't have that often, so it yeah. was kind of fun. Yeah, uh, <laughs> um, but it was just a great time. We spent about a, almost a week with them too. I yeah. guess four days, somewhere like five. that, five days, mm -hmm. something like that. Um, and by the end, but by the end of it, we were ready to come home. Yeah. It was. I mean, I wasn't, I wasn't. Yeah. I mean, we miss, <laughs> I missed them, but I missed home too. Mm -hmm. So it was good. It's good to think I'm home sometimes. Mm -hmm. Um, we had a really nice visit and flew, you know, flew back. And the very next day we had a, a, a New Year's Eve party. Yeah. Which was also. A, at your brother's house. At my brother's house. Mm -hmm. Um, it was like a chili theme. We had, we had some mm -hmm. food, had played some games and visited. Mm -hmm. Um, so it's been a busy, busy month for us. Yeah. And but, then yesterday we finally had another quiet day to ourselves. <laughs> which was very much appreciated. Yeah. I think we just stitched all day. We just stitched, watched some floss tube and just relaxed. Oh, we've been enjoying so much everybody's whip parades and planned videos and yeah. Yeah. Just all the wonderful things that everybody in this community shares with us. So yeah. um, it was a nice, nice quiet day that we really needed. Um, yeah. So I think that's probably it for life plan. Yeah, we had a full month. It was a full month. But we had lots of time for stitching. We did, which <laughs> we're, we'll be getting ready to share with you. Yeah. Um, so uh, I guess we can start with some fully finished objects. We, we did have. have a few fully finished objects. Yep. Uh, do you want me to start? Or do you want um, to start? I could start. So one thing that I had showed last time that I had returned to working on which I forgot I had started <laughs> um a few years ago was the handsome design block party 25th um I think I started this in 2022 at some point and I fully finished it into the little pillow it turned out great it turned out awesome I don't know what past me was thinking I had stopped stitching on it because I wasn't happy with the colors but whatever Melanie <laughs> Present Melanie likes it a lot. Present Melanie loves it. I did all of the top and I had the buttons. I had bought them at the same time that I bought the pattern and then I finished it up really quickly. I'm yeah. so happy with it. I think I it love turned it. out great. So. Yeah, it's so cute. Another thing which I haven't showed you in a while is the Waxing Mood Design Snowman Trio. This is one of the things I had started last year in my 12 Days of Christmas stitching. Um... I only have one more left that I haven't finished, so we'll see if I can finish that this year or not. But I had decided to do just two of these, so I was missing one color. <laughs> so I finished stitching that color, and then I finished them into pillows. So I got Frosty and Chili. Yeah, she loves her, she loves her snowman, I know. <laughs> um, these I stitched with some of the colorful colors. I think the blues and the border and the bottom and the white were what was called for, and everything else I just kind of pulled from, pulled from the closet of colors. And then I had the snowflake fabric, which I put in the back. And, and, and they turned out super cute. Happy little snow friends. They did. <laughs> <laughs> um, these were stitched on, I don't think, a 32 count apparition by Color and Cotton. And I, it looks like I used two, two over two in my stitching. Is, is that it for your... Then books? there was one more thing, which oh, I'll have to insert a picture. Oh, yeah. um, I had done some secret stitching, which yeah. I couldn't show you last time. Um, <laughs> but I found this Dimensions kit called Mom, um, which I had bought last year at some point. And my mom's birthday is right after Christmas. So I stitched this up for her. I didn't use the fabric that came with the kit because it had a smell to it. I don't know if... I had bought it on Amazon, but it must have been through a seller. And I didn't, they must use scented things in their house or something. So, um, I didn't use the fabric. I bought a 28 count Celestine by Color and Cotton. And that's what I stitched it on. I think it turned out, it turned out great. nice. I turned it into a little pillow. So she do, has no, that do in her house Do I have a picture now. of it or no? Yeah. I took some pictures before I gifted it. 
Okay, yeah, so we can we can put that in there uh, to show you guys. But, yeah. Yeah. Um, and those are my fully finished. Fully fin I don't have as many fully finishes. You have one, though. I do. I have, I have one fully <laughs> finished. Um, th this one, I, I think I've showed the pattern before. It's the uh, JBW Designs Nordic Reindeer. Mm -hmm. uh, so the, this is the... You were so close to a finish last time. I was very film. close to a finish. Yeah. Um, so I actually did finish it and got it. It's fully finished now, which you helped me with a little bit. Yeah. Um, but I did, actually did it in red, and it turned out really nice. Um, I thought it this the red looked really nice. This was um, on uh, 20 count... Uh, uh, cranberry mm -hmm. by live and die la mm -hmm. and uh i used all the, just a, a call for white but i, I like the red better mm -hmm. um and then i turned it into a pillow i think i might need like a button or a doodad or a bow or something right here but like i'm i'm happy with how it i think it turned out great i really mm -hmm. like the way it looks so yeah I yeah i had my goal go through my fabric and pick out, pick the, fabric, out what he wanted. the fabric i wanted to go with mm -hmm. it and uh she's a little more handy with the with the the sewing machine that I am, so yeah. uh, she helps with that. I, I can definitely, I've stuffed a few pillows, but I'm yeah. not really good at the sewing machine. <laughs> um, I think that's my only fully finished object. Yeah. But. Um, and so. I didn't have any, well, I do have some finishes, but I they're in the whip pile. I do have a finish. I, I, I know last time I had showed my Chris it up, um, I actually finished it. I, I put a border around it, which I, I kind of looked at my different other patterns I had and chose some kind of designs to turn mm -hmm. into the corners for the border. Mm -hmm. And it turned out pretty nice. Uh, I like the way it looks. And so there's the, the border I kind of added to it. Um, so yeah, I, I'm going to fully finish it hopefully this month or next, something like mm -hmm. that, because I want to get a wooden plaque for it. But I think the border adds, will add something once it's on the plaque. It'll look real nice. Mm -hmm. um, so that was my, my fully finish. Um, I don't think I have any other full finishes. Or finishes, not full finishes. Yeah, I don't think so. Um, so I think I think that's it. And, we, and we're ready to work on, move on to whips yeah i'm gonna shuffle some things around yeah so we'll be right back uh, yep. just bear with us yeah all right uh, so we're back and i've kind of got things arranged i, I did want to mention i forgot to to say the uh the fabric the fabric i used for the chris setup was a 20 count zweiger it's just a white um so nothing special about it but mm -hmm. So. And that's a pattern by Stitch Man Darcy. Stitch Man Darcy. In honor of Chris at Chris Cross Stitch. And Chris was nice enough to share with me, so mm -hmm. uh, I, I appreciate it. Yeah, uh, if you watch Chris and that's a pattern you're interested in, I think you can email him. He, he, I'm sure he'd probably be happy to share it. It's it's uh, just a fun pattern. I really love what he does over there. So, yeah. uh, All right, so do you want to get st started with the works in progress? Yeah, we have a bunch of works in progress. We do. But I do, especially. <laughs> she has way more than I I'm I've typically been a monogamous stitcher, but I've branched out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so one of the things that I had mentioned in our last few videos was that I was planning on doing 12 days of Christmas stitching. Um, and last year and this year both, I did 12 days of Snow Friends. So each day I started a different pattern that had a snow person on it. Yep. And, and I ended up with 12. <laughs> yes. It was fun to see her start each one. I enjoyed it. Yeah. I had a lot of fun with the whole process, with kitting it up, with stitching, with starting. Um, now I have all these memories tied to it of different places that I stitched them, and I'm looking forward to finishing some of them in the months ahead. But I thought I would start by showing you those works in progress that I have that were all starts. Sounds good. Yeah, so my first, um, so as I was posting, I used the hashtag 12 Days of Snow Friends. And um, thank you for all of you who followed along and enjoyed seeing what I was doing as I was doing it. Um, I tried to be good about posting. I'm She's getting better about getting it. Getting better. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so the first one that I did was Rudolph and Friends by Brenda Gervais with I Needle and Thread. And I'm stitching this two over two with assorted threads, some called for, some just pulled from the closet, um, on a 32 count Cleveland Winter Sky by Laura's Fabrics. And this is how far I got. So I did some of this on the first day, and then this is something that I brought on our trip to Florida, and I stitched this in the evenings um, at our hotel, and then also on the plane ride home. So, it's cute. It's, it's cute. close to a finish. Yeah, it's getting close. It's not far. I like it. I like how it looks on the blue. And it's cute. And I can tell you the colors if you are interested in that. Uh, the second one was Quilted Christmas Snowman by Emily Call. I am stitching this on two over two with, again, assorted threads. I'm going crazy with power. Um, on a 36 count Spellbound by Needle Bling Designs. Um, I know I'm using the 3860 
five for the white. And then I'm going to kind of lighten up the colors. I had the colors that Emily called for, um, but they're a little bit darker than I want. So I'm gonna lighten them up, I think, to pinks and teals or blues. I might make it a little more wintry. But it's super cute. It is super cute. Yep. She does love her snowman. I like I like the snowman too, so. I yeah. do. We have a little, we have a little, well, we used to have a little snowman in the village, but I guess we have some Santa Claus village now. Yeah, well, we still have some people. We still have snow people. <laughs> <laughs> All right, my third one was A Winter's Day Visit by Brenda Gervais of With Thy Needle and Thread. I am stitching this one over two with the called for threads on 32 count cobblestone by Zweigart. And this is how far I got. His cute little head with some snowflakes. I love the Brenda Gervais snowman mouse. They look like, hmm, it's snowing. Hmm. <laughs> I love winter. <laughs> I do like winter. So that's super cute. My cute. fourth one is Mr. Marshmallow by Brenda Gervais with Thy Needle and Thread. And I am stitching this one over two with the called for threads on 36 count. The fabric is marked as limited edition 2014 by Color and Cotton. Um, I know that they've kind of changed the way that they do their limited editions, but that was the number that was on the one that I have. It's a very bright purple. And uh, if you're new here, I love purple. <laughs> she does. <laughs> it's my favorite color. <laughs> so I'm loving the way that this is looking on this fabric. He's ready for a little tasty treat. He is. <laughs> okay. My number five is Frosty's Night Out by Blackbird Designs. I'm stitching this with all the called for threads, uh, except for one. Hmm. Yeah, except for one. On a 32 count Cleveland Winter Sky by Loris Fabrics. And I did a lot of stitching that day. <laughs> she did. I think we watched a couple movies. I think that was one of our few days at home. Yeah, not too many. But I <laughs> like it a lot. I think it's super cute. I love that little jacket, jumper, yeah. scarf combination. It's going to be cute. It is. The fabric is a little bit lighter than what's called for, but I'm liking the way that it turned out. It looks like it's his day out instead of his night out. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm okay with that. He deserves a day out, too. Yes, he deserves all the time out. Um, number six is Snow Magical by Brenda Gervais of With Thy Needle and Thread. I'm stitching this on a 36 count silver fox by Fiber on a Whim. And I'm using one over two with, I think, the called for threads. I didn't get very far, but I'm thinking the color that I used for the head is the called for color. And I like it. I like it. <laughs> Lots of snow people. All right, the next one was Whitaker by Stacy Nash. I am stitching this one over two with the called for threads on Dark Olive by Swiker. And there was not much stitching, but some. I'm doing this, as I said, with one thread on 28 counts. So it's going to give it kind of a vintage look. I haven't fully read the directions, but I thought I saw the words antiquing spray. So I'm hoping that by doing this, I won't have to use that. So it'll kind of help to give it a vintagey look. Without having to use Without having to use the spray. But yeah, they're gonna be huge and I'm gonna <laughs> love it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> because I'm using the same fabric for Paisley, which was my next start. So it's gonna be on the same 28 count Dark Olive by Zweigart. All the called for threads with one strand over two. And this I, is how I far I got. I think they're going to look great. So. Oh, they're going to be, I'm going to love it. <laughs> I do intend on stitching them as little, um, she does all of these animal cracker patterns where she makes them into little, like, stuffed friends. I'm going to do that. So, it'll be cute. Okay, number nine is 
Give Greatly by Silver Creek Samplers. Um, this is being stitched so far with the called for threads. I'm debating changing a few colors. We'll see what happens as I come back to this later in the year. But um, this is on a mystery fabric by Color and Cotton. And I think it's a 40 count because I'm just using one thread. Um, this is how far I got. I worked on the hat and some of the snowflakes. It's a really beautiful, like, beigey, tan color. So, it's looking good so far. Yeah, they're all looking great. Yeah. Um, the next one is another Silver Creek sampler pattern. This one's called Mary Sleigh Bells. I was coming up with a little song for this <laughs> as I was <laughs> stitching that day. <laughs> um, but it's so cute. Such a cute pattern. Um, and I am going crazy with power. So she does say in the pattern that she used the reverse side of the blue Petty Point by Zweigart, which I thought was brilliant. Total genius. So that is what I did. You can see this side is the actual, like, the regular side. And this is the reverse side. So it does give that sort of snowflakey effect without being as bright and vibrant as the regular side. So that I followed. That is really brilliant. But everything else, I'm just, I'm winterizing the colors um, instead of, there's a lot of green and red in the pattern, and I want this to be more of a winter thing. So that we can leave so, out more often. Yeah, so I actually asked Michael for help, and we kind of went through all of my greens and purples and blues and picked out some colors to use. Yeah. Because sometimes Michael has a better eye for color than I do. It's true. <laughs> you do. <laughs> Don't deny it. Okay, I'll, if, I, if I must. <laughs> <laughs> so I picked the darkest blue to use for the words. And the words went fast. So it looks like I did a lot of stitching. It looks beautiful. <laughs> but I'm happy with it. And I'm looking forward to working on that more. Um, the next one that I did was Northern Snowman by Jim Shore for Mill Hill. This was a kit. And I'm using all of the kit stuff, the perforated paper and floss. And this is where I am so far. It's looking good, too. Yeah, it is. I do like Mill Hill kits. I do a lot of Mill Hill kits, I know, so. Yeah, I think you've done more than, or maybe we've done some more. Maybe. I don't know. I'm not sure how many. Yeah. I know I've done quite a few. It's cute, though. And I'm going to love it when it's done. And the last one was Snow Buddy by Satsuma Street. I bought this at Persnickety last summer, and it's been waiting for me patiently until December. <laughs> and this is the only one that I finished out of all of them, because it's the smallest and the cutest. It is cute. So this was a kit, and I used all of the called for things except Jody calls for you to use two strands of thread when you're stitching, and I used three. And I did have plenty of thread to do that. I wasn't even close to running out. So if that's kind of a look that you prefer, know that there is enough floss in the kit for you to be able to do that. I think if I hadn't done that, I would have had enough to stitch it twice. So if that's something you prefer, keep that in mind. That's true. <laughs> but it's adorable with all of the... Little buttons and the... Uh, no, there's no buttons. There's sequins. Oh, there's sequins. Sorry. Yeah. Perfect. Sequins of back stitching. It looks so cute. So I'm looking forward to turning this into an ornament. Probably by the next video, you'll see that. Yeah. <laughs> and... Those were my 12 days of snow friends. 12 days of snow friends. Yeah. So I, I guess I'll show mine then and give you a break from Yeah, speaking. and then I'll show the rest <laughs> of what I did. Uh, I don't have nearly <laughs> so many to show, but I do have some. Um, so this one here, the first one is one, uh, it's Kringle Flying Academy, which uh, by Diane uh, Randall by Silver Creek Samplers. Mm -hmm. And I actually bought this at our craft fair that we went to. Yeah, at the Galleria. At the Galleria. Mm -hmm. The Galleria we went to. Uh, so I'm, you probably have seen this one because it's... Uh, you showed it as a plan. I showed it as a plan. Last I think, time. I think, I know I've seen a few people stitching this one. So, mm -hmm. um, and I decided to do it on, uh, let's see, uh, it's 18 count Cardiff uh, Opalescent uh, by Live and Die uh, LA, which I really like the fabrics. And this was your Christmas start? This was my Christmas start. Yeah. So I started on Christmas. I took it down to Florida with me and I kept stitching it. So I think it's turning out really nice. And it's probably going to remain a whip until next Christmas season. Because mm -hmm. I don't know that I'll stitch it this winter. But mm -hmm. 
I think it's looking, it looks really nice on this, uh, this opalescent. It so, looks great on there. So, uh, I'm just using the called for, I'm doing it, uh, one over one on, it's an Aida, so, mm -hmm. um, I think it's looking really nice. And it's all DMC threads? This is all DMC thread. Mm -hmm. So, I did notice, uh, in, in the picture, you can probably tell a little bit that they probably use a variegated in the Kringle, um, which I didn't notice until I was already stitching, but I like the way it's looking on the mm -hmm. DMC they call for. Yeah. I, the, the, they must have changed that mm -hmm. after they had it, uh, stitched up as a model, but. Mm -hmm. I think it's nice. Um, and I have a Mill Hill kit. Uh, this is uh, Santa's Treats uh, by Mill Hill. And so um, I've had this one for maybe a couple of years. I don't know. It's been a while. Yeah. Uh, and I hadn't stitched it yet. Um, I didn't quite finish it. I, I still have all the beading to do. But you did finish the stitching. I did finish the stitching. Yeah. So I guess technically it's a finish. Uh, <laughs> but not really. But not really. Uh, but I think it turned out really nice. Um, mm -hmm. I obviously didn't start in the center like I was supposed to. Eh, but it'll, it'll we'll look it fine. Work. I'll get it framed. It'll, it'll look fine. Um, so I will probably I will finish the beading on this because I, I enjoy beading. It's kind of meditative and, and calming. Mm -hmm. So, um, But the stitching turned out really nice. I had plenty of... I still have leftover thread for this one. Mm -hmm. so I don't know that I had enough to do it twice. But um, I think it turned out pretty nicely. Yeah. Your stitching is nice on the... Well, I mean, your stitching is always nice. But... <laughs> this one's particularly nice. <laughs> Sometimes my <laughs> stitching on perforated paper gets a little wonky, but yours... I've done a lot of them, so I'm kind of getting used to the perforated paper. Yeah. It's definitely a little bit of different tension in it. And mm -hmm. um, I think this one called for a lot of, like, two threads mm -hmm. ones. Except for, I think the whites were three. Um, this is... Oh, this one I actually didn't stitch on. It's, this is going to be in my future plans. Okay. So that is side. Put in the wrong spot. <laughs> <laughs> this is the one I've been I've been doing little ones out of. Uh, this is uh, NES is Love. Uh, love is NES. Um, it is by uh, Pixel Perfect Patterns. Um, so I've just been stitching them individually. I'm going to turn them into ornaments eventually. Um, and I, did, I only have one additional one because I didn't stitch as much of these at this time. But I added a new uh, Legend of Zelda ornament that's from the very first legend of zelda if you're as old as i am and i've played the original <laughs> and if you're not as old as i am you should play the original open it up and show them, all the rest all of, of the ones that you've done yeah and this is on uh 18 i think it's 18 count mm -hmm. yeah 18 count slate by uh, fabrics by stephanie so i have i have a number of them stitched let's see if i can get them all in there are they all in there yeah i think so so those are all characters from original NES games that I played growing up. So I thought it was a fun nostalgia. Eventually, I'm going to add a little um, little text below them to saying mm. what each of the games is. So because not everybody will know what they are, mm -hmm. um, but I think that'll be a nice little Christmas ornament collection that I I can create with, from this pattern. Yeah. So I like the pattern too, but I think this will be more fun for me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and then this other whip I have is one I started. I guess the end of November I started it. I've had it for a while. Mm -hmm. um, but I know the, they're going to start releasing their... Um, the, this is a, a stitch along on... I forget the Facebook group, but we can put that in the cotton notes. Yeah. So. Um, and uh, I know Subpar is the one who got me onto this. And I just love it because you get to choose and design your own Hobbit house. And they're going to start releasing new patterns this month. So yeah, it's a... It's a sound. Lord of the Rings. It's Lord of the choose Rings. Your choose your own adventure one. Mm -hmm. And... I'm not nearly finished with the first Or Adventures week. in Middle Earth. Adventures in Middle Earth. Something like That's that. Something like that. It'll be below if you're um, interested. Yeah, we'll put a link in that to, the, mm -hmm. to them if you're interested. And so I was going to try to catch up and finish the entire first top part that you're supposed to have done before they start releasing those. And, of course, I didn't make it. Uh, I had too many other things to stitch on. Um, <laughs> but you made a lot of progress. I did make well. a lot of progress. And I will say, if you are interested... Uh, as as they release the different style patterns, you should download them because at once the whole thing is actually finished, they take it off their website, mm -hmm. so you won't be able to get it later. So if you're, is this something you're interested in, uh, definitely start download them as they release them. But this is where I got this one is uh, I've stitched on I think it's a twenty count. Just let's see where is it? It's a yeah, it's a twenty count uh, uh, by Swigard. It's an oak meal is the name of it. It's kind of a rustic one, but it's looking really nice. Um, that's just the, the tree is, I chose fall because fall is my favorite season. Um, and just the, the not to do the, they have an option to do the tree with a, like a little party set decorations in it, which I decided not to. 
Um, and then this bottom part is going to be the same through for every one of them. And then this part here, you'll change however you want your habit house to look. Hmm. So, and there's, there's different, uh, very, you can put your name or, or, or text down here as part of the pattern. And then on the other side, you can either stitch yourself or like a little frame. So, um, that one is turning out really nicely. Um, I'll just keep stitching on it and download the patterns as they come. Cause I don't think I'll be. I, don't, I, won't, I won't be finished by the time they start releasing them. Yeah, well, you started after they had started. Oh, yeah, I've, I started some months after it. I, it yeah. took me a while to get it kitted up, and um, but I'm really enjoying it. It's it's a nice, this is just one over one with one one thread. Mm -hmm. So, and I'm using the called fours on this one. Um, I had considered changing a color, but uh, I think it's going to be fine because they, they're going to be surrounded by other colors mm -hmm. as I stitch, so it should be fine. Um, so, I think those are all my whips for this year so far, but that's a lot, way more than I usually have. <laughs> I've been doing one or two at a time, and now I have five or six. Mm -hmm. So those are all my whips, not counting the one that I didn't stitch on it this month, but it'll be my it's my future plan, so I'll get mm -hmm. to that one later. All right. And I had a few other things that I worked on aside from the Snow Friends. So the first one is my Christmas chart. I decided to do Peace on Earth by Barbie Petal Pusher. And she has two different versions of this pattern. One is All Is Calm, and that's more grayish, tan, brown tones, kind of silvery. And this is the All Is Bright. It has more vibrant colors, and it's more gold toned. And I saw it at Gallery at night. She had that. It came home with me. <laughs> <laughs> so I stitched on this quite a lot the last week. Um, and I'm loving the way that it's looking. I think I've used all of the called for DMC threads except for the bird's eyes and beaks. The color that was called for was more like of a really light tan and it wasn't showing up on my, I don't know if it's because my fabric is so vibrant or what the difference was, but I just darkened it up a little bit with another color. And I've enjoyed stitching on this. I stitched the word peace when we were at my parents. And then I did the swirls and one of the birds at Michael Simone's. And then the rest I've done since we got home from our trip. But yeah, it's beautiful. I'm stitching this one over two on a 36 count Mountain Mist by Loris Fabrics. And I love it. Uh, another thing that I've been stitching on that I brought uh, to Florida to start on the plane because I thought it was going to be easy plane stitching was the Gilmoreisms Gilmore Girls Sal that's being done by Forbidden Fiber Co. Oh, yeah, I forgot about that one. Yeah. <laughs> um, I got the fabric and the floss, I think, a couple days after we filmed our last video. And um, so, yeah, I thought the border had already been released at that time. So I thought that would be easy stitching because it's all one color. Um, and this is how far I got. Yeah, she was stitching on the plane. I was reading. <laughs> yeah, I stitched on this on the plane ride down to Florida. Um, the fabric is called Casablanca. And I did the 32 count option. It's like a kind of a light blue, gray, purplish color. And then this color that we've been using so far is Dark Roast, which is a brownish, grayish, blackish color. So I wanted to make sure to get the first box done because the first release was yesterday and I saw it last night and it's Cat Kirk. <laughs> <laughs> so I will stitch that in at some point this week. They're releasing each pattern every Monday between yesterday and the end of March. So I have some more border work to do, um, but yeah, I accomplished my goal. And I, sen I sense we'll probably be watching Gilmore Rose. Yeah. Time. Uh, it was gifted to me for Christmas. That was me. I bought her that. <laughs> so I'm sure we'll start watching that as I'm stitching this yeah. in the months ahead. Definitely. <laughs> <laughs> but that was my progress on that. And then I had one. Oh, here's the other. I'll show you. Oh, yeah. I did get together. All, all I bought a dragonfly bling because <laughs> I need bling for this. And then I have all of the beautiful threads from Forbidden Fiber Co. I've never used their floss before. Um, so far, I'm enjoying it, but I love the names on some of these. Um, Troubadour, Cinnamon, uh, <laughs> Editor, it, very Gilmore Girls inspired names. Um, I know that they do have a DMC uh, option, so if you're interested in joining along, 
um, or are already working on this, you can use these instead. Yeah. And I think it would look nice. <laughs> um, and then the last thing that I started was I had a New Year's Day start yesterday, last night. This is White Winter Moth by Kathy Barrick. This is the pattern that I've been wanting for a little bit. And I went to Color and Cotton the week after we filmed our video. And um, I kitted this up entirely there. I bought the pattern and fabric and floss. And the fabric that I chose is a 32 count bronze by Color and Cotton. It's a lovely golden brownish color. And I'm going wild with power on the colors. <laughs> <laughs> but this is how far I got yesterday, last night. And I'm pleased with that. Yeah. Um, the colors that I selected are all from the beautiful rainbow wall at the Color and Cotton store. I kind of went through and picked colors that would work. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. It said, you know, like light teal green, dark teal green. It calls for MPIs, uh, which I've never worked with silk before. Someday I may, but I'm, it's not something I'm ready for yet. So I picked um, some colors that I thought would look close from the wall. And I picked two whites. I think one I'm going to use on the outside and one I'm going to use on the moth. But mm, I spent a <laughs> long time staring at that wall. I think I was in there for like two hours just... Figuring out colors. Looking at the wall, looking at the fabric. I think you picked up some really good colors. I think there. I did. I think I did. I'm I pleased with it. I think they're going to look So if nice. you're curious what the names of them are or you're wanting to stitch this with this conversion, you can let me know and I can send you the colors. And that's, that's, it. that's all, all our works whips? in progress. That's all of our whips. Wow. Yeah, for this month. <laughs> <laughs> that was all my whips that I have, so. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Minus the one that I'm going to talk about in the plans. But, so, uh, yeah. Um, I guess next will be purchases. Yeah. So, as I said, I did go to Color and Cotton and kitted up this. Um, I also bought a few things that were gifts. And I think I got one other fabric, but it's already put with my other fabric. So Yeah, I don't think I bought anything this month. And I got a couple pinks. There was a project I had started over the summer for Cross Stitch Camp that I failed my mission to complete and the time allotted because I wasn't happy with one of the pinks I had chosen. So I grabbed a couple of pinks while I was there. So this spring I'll probably get back to that. Yeah, I think the only thing I got was I had you pick me up a few flosses I was missing for one of my you, projects. Yeah, you needed some DMCs for the Kringle Flying Academy. The Kringle Flying Academy. So I picked up those. But other than that, I don't think I bought anything. I, I bought some Christmas gifts. Yeah. But I didn't buy any extra things for myself. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but, um, yeah, I, I guess that's that's it for purchase. Most of it was spending on other people. So, yeah. But, um. I guess we can move on to Stitchy Kindness. Yeah, I need to shift some things again. Yeah, so give us a, a second and we'll be right back. Yep. All right, so we are back. Um, we got our, our Stitchy Kindness together. Uh, do you want me to start or do you want to start? Well, I'll start. So as I had mentioned, my mom and I had a day at the Antique Mall. And um, it was so much fun. One of the things that my mom loves, um, that I also love, but I we have a larger kitchen table is vintage tablecloths. My mom and I both love looking at vintage tablecloths. And so while we were at the antique mall, she picked one out and it had some stains and some holes and some problems, but it was a really beautiful older pattern and that good, good vintage tablecloth feel. Um, so she ended up turning those or that into project bags and she gave me one of them. So I'll show, share that with you. Um, so this is kind of the corner of the tablecloth. Yes, it, it turned out beautiful. It's so fun. And it's got the memory of, I'm with your mom. of that fun with day with my mom, mom tied up into it. So I'm looking forward to using this. Sweet project bag. Thanks, mom. <laughs> <laughs> uh, my mom also, for Christmas every year, gives a, makes us ornaments. Sometimes she does paper crafting, and the last few years she's done cross stitch ornaments. So this year she gifted us yeah. two ornaments. They turned out really cute. They're super cute. My little Santa Claus. And Mrs. Claus with the gingerbread man. 
Oh, oh. They're so cute. <laughs> she did these, I think, a perforated paper. A perforated paper. She just filled it, finished it with some felt on the back. Yeah. felt. So. She used some vintage tags to put our names on them. Yeah. And they've been on our tree. They turned out super cute. Thanks, Mom. Thank you. You did a great job. We love them. And we do love them. <laughs> I put them on the front of our tree so we can <laughs> see them. Um, and I can tell you that I know that those came from this book, uh, Christmas Cross Stitch Treasures by Joan Elliott. They are, hold on, let me. Well, that was also a Christmas gift. <laughs> hold on. Christmas Roly Polies. <laughs> these are what my mom stitched for all of us this year. Um, so these are the first two. And uh, the reason that I know this and that I have this book is because this was my gift from Frosty the Snowman this year. Oh, yeah. Every year, Frosty the Snowman brings everyone in my family some creative, crafty... Crafty item. Uh, crafty item. Gift. Frosty brought my brother and sister-in-law some diamond painting, which looked like a lot of fun. Yeah. But the rest of us got cross-stitch. Yes, you got that. So this is the book that I was given. And partly because of these roly-poly ornaments, um, I had done... I want to say it was a Jan Lynn kit back in the 90s. I think the dates on the ones that still exist are like 97 and 98 and 99. I remember stitching them over the summers. And I did some of the ones in the kit. But my mom and Frosty thought that I would like maybe stitching some of them again. Yeah. But I love a lot of these. There's this beautiful uh, samplers in here. And something else. Oh. Snow people, of course. Those will be stitched. <laughs> and I do love this Santa that's pictured on the front. So, thanks so much, Frosty. Looking forward to stitching some of those. And I guess I will show my, my Frosty gift as well. Yeah. So, this was my Frosty gift. And um, it's like, it's Snoopy in uh, the Peanuts gang. And I think the pattern is the one of him actually trying to kick it. And her pulling it away. Uh, which I, guess I can't show without showing the pattern. So. Yeah, here. See if we can take it out. <laughs> and make it a little, make it a little, little less uh, yeah. glary. But Michael loves I, football. I love football and I love Snoopy. And he loves Snoopy. I mean, what's a lot to love? Football. Yeah, Snoopy, and this so. is a vintage. This is a vintage chart. I think it's um, from the nineties. I have a few Snoopy patterns. I well, have stitched one for this cup that I have. Yeah, I think that was also a frosty gift. That was also a frosty gift. Yeah. And so and she got me this one. This one will probably stitch at some point this year, which I'll. I'll talk about that in my plans, but yeah. I do I do love Snoopy. He's my favorite, so <laughs> he's always been my favorite. Yeah, so that was fun. Um, I received from patterns as gifts, and so did you. We did. Mm -hmm. um, so I guess I can. I would try to take this one out if you want to. No, that's okay. No, nope. just try to angle. Let's it. Try to angle it. Yeah. So I this is there's a whole series of these. Um, this one is the I think you had winter bought oak. I had bought the fall one, one. at Galleria. I bought the fall and one. And then your brother and sister in law gave you one for your birthday. Yep. And then this one was at Christmas. Yeah, um, from your mom. So I, I do want the whole series. There's one of them I don't have. I think it's the summer I don't have. Yeah, I think so. But I do like these uh, oak winter oak ones by Mill Hill. Uh, so I'm gonna end up stitching that at some point, but um and this one was for my brother-in-law and yeah, sister-in-law down in Florida. Um, I'm, I'm going to have to stitch this one because I, I love pretzels in the office and it combines both of them. Oh. Pretzel day. If you've seen the office, you know exactly what I'm talking about. If you haven't, then you should watch it because it's a great show. Brilliant. And pretzel day fits me perfectly. Yeah. I love pretzels. I eat pretzels almost every day. You instigated a pretzel day. I instigated work. a pretzel day at work. Yeah. Uh, I got one going, so it was kind of fun. Mm -hmm. And so I will be stitching that one as well. Yeah. Uh, but those are my, uh, we're stitching kind of from. Yeah. And I received some patterns as gift as well. So Michael gave me this one from the Blue Flower Forest Home. I love this. Foresty It's vibe. a beautiful pattern. It is. I'm going to stitch it. <laughs> um, I received this uh, Let It Snow uh, Snowman, the 2018 Santa. Because you know how I feel about snow people. And the Santa's Revisited, book number 195. I love both the Sunflower Snowman and the Quilty Snowman. So I'll definitely stitch those. I do like the Woodland ones also, but I'm definitely going to stitch these two. And I want to stitch one of them on the, like, seven-count fabric. I think it'll be fun. But 
Thank you, Michael. You're welcome. <laughs> and then Michael's mom got me two patterns. Uh, Spring Moon by Plum Street Samplers. Which is beautiful. And Tuckleberry Farm by The Blue Flower. Which I love. What's not to love? Purple. It's a beautiful pattern. Mountains. With colors, so. Animals. I may possibly... This was a gift from Michael's mom, and she loves, she loves animals, and I think I might try to find some way to um, honor her. I might change some of the letters in the alphabet for her initials. Um, yeah, I don't know. You'll figure it out. I'll think of some way, <laughs> but it's beautiful. Thank you. Thanks, mom. <laughs> <laughs> And then there's a couple others, I think. And that's it. Was that it? Oh. Yeah, those were our kindness. Our stitching kindness, Kinesses. yeah. Kindnesses. Um, yeah, I think that was it. So what's next? Uh, we have a couple shout-outs I think we wanted to do. Well, hmm. we've been enjoying all the floss foods this time of year. Floss foods have been great. Um, <laughs> I, know, I know somebody I've really enjoyed watching lately has been Caroline. Um, oh, yeah, Caroline Stitch Caroline Corner. Caroline Stitch Corner. Um, mm -hmm. I've really enjoyed watching her videos. Uh, mm -hmm. Just a lot of fun things. I, I love the fact that she also does knitting. It's just fun to see. Mm -hmm. um, she made a Christmas dress for she herself. She made a Christmas dress for herself, beautiful. which is beautiful. Mm -hmm. um, so I've enjoyed hers a lot. And I know she's had a few of them just recently. Mm -hmm. Yeah, she did a Vlogmas kind of a thing once a week. Yeah. Um, so who, who else have we been watching? Um, well, I wanted to mention the Stitching Owl. Yeah, the Stitching Owl. Who, mm, I love it. <laughs> Uh, she plays the piano and she stitches and she just has such a generous heart that shines through in her videos. Um, so check her out. Also, Andrew, the running stitcher is a newer floss tuber, but I don't think I need to mention him because all of us love him, don't we? <laughs> <laughs> uh, he's doing a piece on waist canvas on a sweatshirt, which has brought back a lot of memories every time he shows it of... I had a piece that was stitched by my mom on waist canvas with a bear ballerina back in the 90s. Um, and I think we probably had some other things that were cross-stitched that way. And I think I had tried to use it one time without much success. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you just introduced me to somebody that I, have, I had a lot of fun watching uh, yesterday. Was it Saxon, Johnny Saxon? Or? Johnny Saxon. Johnny mm -hmm. Saxon was a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. um, I... I, I Particularly, I, I loved his stitching, but I also loved the fact that he just got introduced to D and D, which was kind of fun for me because yeah. I've been playing D and D for many years, yeah. and just fun to see the excitement that he has for it now in his life. And yeah, so he, he was fun to watch. I enjoyed watching his his video. Mm -hmm. um, of course, all the people who we usually watch. All the people you usually watch. I always watch Hillary and Subpar and yeah. Chris. I always look forward to Chris's videos. Yeah, um, every other week. And Marjorie, Marjorie and. Cam the Stitcher and Megan the Seattle Stitcher and Bridget in the Museum Stitcher New Hampshire and Stitcher. New Hampshire Stitcher, Sarah Stitchy Spot, Pam and Steph. And Steph. <laughs> yeah, the, we've been enjoying everybody. So, yeah, um, yeah. I guess, I guess that's it, it for now. For yeah. Now. But uh, we can move on to talking about plans. But I think I'll have to shift a few things. Right All right, now. we can shift things. Uh, so I'll be back in a second. All right. Okay, so we are back. Um, I have a lot of... I, I think I have more concrete plans than she does. Yeah. Um, but... I mostly just have short-term plans for the month ahead, so I'll talk about that. Okay. And then I have some, like, general plans for 2024, which I can discuss. Um, two things that I'm considering working on, I thought I was going to get to last month, but with all the snow people, that didn't happen, is to, the next two uh, sheep and the little house... Needleworks Sheep Virtues series. These two are very wintry, so I'd like to try to do these this winter. Otherwise, I'm afraid I'm gonna get behind and not want to stitch on these until next year. So, hopefully, I can do Joyfulness and Hope. Um, Julie at Julian Stitches has a brilliant plan for 2024, which is to do a motif a week on some lingering projects. So the one that I'm hoping to do a motif a week on in January and February is Winter Quakers by Rosewood Manor. This is a project I had started January 1st, 2023, and then 
I think I worked on it for a couple days and that was it. <laughs> <laughs> so I would like to really try to focus on this and get more done this winter. This was as far as I got in one week last year. So I'm hoping to make some more progress. I think maybe it goes this way. I don't even remember which way it goes. <laughs> That's how long it's been since I looked at it. Um, so I'm hoping I can kind of divide this up and at least touch it one day a week in January and February. That's a goal. Hashtag goals. Thank you, Julie, for that <laughs> idea because I think it's going to help me um, work on some projects that otherwise I wouldn't have this year. And that, I'm going crazy with colors. And I think it's on a 28 count dwarf by Picture This Plus, but I'll let you know in the comments below. <laughs> um, another larger project that I have uh, that I'm going to be starting at the end of this month is, I didn't take this out of plastic, I'm very sorry, Silver Bells by Jan Hicks Creates. Back at Galleria, we were supposed to go with my parents, but plans got kind of shuffled around. So when we showed all of our purchases from Galleria, I said, Mom, if there's anything that you bought that I also bought, let me know and we can stitch it along. And this was the only thing that we both bought. <laughs> but the reason we both bought it is because my grandmother, my mom's mom, had a love of Christmas bells. We don't know why. We don't know the reason. <laughs> um, but she just had a sweet spot in her heart for silver bells and Christmas bells. Um, so we're both going to stitch this in her memory. Her birthday was at the end of January. So we're going to be starting this on her birthday. I have all of the called for threads, and then I have two fabric options. So maybe we can get Michael in on deciding this later <laughs> after this video. We'll figure it out. I've got a 36 count uh, limited edition by Color and Cotton. It's kind of a gray. And then I also have this Evergreen Dew by Live and Die LA, which is more of a teal. So the colors are very vibrant, which of course I love. Uh, pinks and greens and reds and blues. I'm looking forward to starting this yeah. and thinking of my grandma and all of the wonderful times that I spent with her um, in past years. Yeah. So thanks mom for stitching that <laughs> along with me. This is your reminder. If you need me to get threads for you, yes. let me know. Let her know I'll before the end of January. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and those are sort of my plans for January. Um, as far as 2024 plans go, I am planning on joining Julie in the Motif a Week. Um, I also have been paying attention to Marjorie at Marjorie Made does Pick a Whip, where she has a jar of different things, like, you know, something with the alphabet, or the one that she just picked yesterday was something that intimidates you. So sometimes they're specific and sometimes they're a little bit more broad. I would like to try to do, I don't know, follow some of her prompts. So I'll have to think about what I can do that intimidates me. There's a lot that intimidates me <laughs> and a lot that doesn't intimidate me. <laughs> so we'll see. But I am planning on throughout the year kind of at least paying attention to what she's pulling and, and seeing if you can follow seeing along. if I can follow along or not. Um, I do have a plan, project planned for my birthday in March. That'll be here before you know it. It'll be here before I know I need to buy fabric for it. Um, but that is And of Forest Grew by Rosewood Manor. And beyond that, I don't know. My plans for the year. I'm not doing Whip Go. I'm not doing anything bonkers. I prefer to stitch what I want. When you want. When my heart tells me to. <laughs> That's kind of how I typically do, but I do have a... I have a, a better sense you of kind some of the have, projects I want to do. Yeah, but, so let's shift to you. But, but they are sub subject to change because I do yeah. kind of I kind of go as I I feel like I what I want to stitch on. Um, <laughs> I've already showed one of them, the Adventures in Middle Earth. Uh, mm -hmm. One is going to be an ongoing one throughout mm -hmm. the year because it's a Sal for one thing, and because mm -hmm. I enjoy it as well. Um, this was the other one that I'm going to pick up again in January, which you've seen before. This is my Fantasy Winter Castle one, um, and it's it's a long term project. I think there's there's a lot of it's full coverage and there's a lot of pages to it, yeah. so it'll be my, my year one of my year round projects. Um, but uh, for the winter media winter, this is one of the ones I'm thinking of possibly doing. Depends on when I start playing Stardew Valley again, oh. because I know he's releasing an update for sometime this winter, I think. And this one will be one of the ones I end up stitching. This one is called Autumn in the Valley. It's the dog version. There's a dog named by Rachel Oliver. Um, so, of course, there's the little dog you get when you play the game, um, if you choose the dogs. And so I just, I love the game. 
and <laughs> I have to stitch something while I'm playing the game. So um, that'll be probably sometime this winter when the patch comes out. Um, the other one, another one in the winter time. I think this is it here. Is the winter? Oh, this is the spring oak. Mm -hmm. the well, you just showed the winter one. I just showed the winter one. Mm -hmm. uh, the spring oak will be a springtime start. Um, the winter oak, which I think I just showed, will be there. I'm not going to do. I keep going back and forth on the Kringle Flying Academy because mm -hmm. for me it's more of Christmas. I'll probably end up saving that until next uh, mm -hmm. Christmas. Yeah. But, but I am going to finish out the beading. So that'll be most of my wintry stuff, probably, which will probably take me into spring. Uh, in spring, I'm thinking of doing a couple few patterns out of this book I got uh, from one of my my supervisor got this for, for one of the for your birthday, for birthday two birthdays ago two, two birthdays ago mm -hmm. it's called uh, mini masterpieces and so it's got a lot of different like works of art or parts of works of art that you can stitch and there's a few in here that I might want to stitch so I might do a few small projects mm -hmm. uh, out of that and then of course the spring oak which is in that same series mm -hmm. um by mill hill so I'm, I'm i may start that one in the spring that one will probably finish pretty quickly um and then summer I'm, i've already showed the it's a pretzel day that'll be a summer project for mm -hmm. me um and then I'm, I'm probably gonna do a snoopy one um which I've already showed the one Snoopy book. And this is my other Snoopy book I thought it would show, but it's got a lot of different patterns in it that you can do um, just to show some of them in the back. Uh, I'll probably do the one, one of the ones that Frosty gave me, but there's mm -hmm. also ones in here I could do. So I haven't mm -hmm. decided which one, um, but it'll definitely be a, a, a summary one. Uh, there is one in summer that I can't show that I'll be working on um, because the people who it's for will be probably be watching this video at some point. So that one will be nameless, but it, there is another project that I'll probably be working on this summer. Um, and for fall, I actually I have a lot of fall stuff because fall is my favorite time of year. <laughs> it's always been, I've always loved fall. This is one your dad has done. He recently finished it. It's in my pile of things to frame. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I had, the, we got the pattern, I got the pattern after him at some point and mm -hmm. it's got uh, some silks. So I'm actually going to try it with the silks. Mm -hmm. um, this is called Autumn Town by Autumn Lane. Um, so you probably, some of you have probably this. seen this. It's a beautiful. Uh, I think Lenny recently finished it too. Yeah. And, um, Hannah, microbiologist makes. I yeah. It's, it's a, close to a finish. It's a beautiful pattern. Um, and it would give me a chance to try some silks because there's only a mm -hmm. couple silks for like the trees, I think. Um, so I'm going to do that one probably in the fall. I have it pretty mostly kitted up. I think I need one, one or mm -hmm. flosses for mm -hmm. it. Yeah. We're missing one. And then I have uh, one that I've had kitted up for almost a couple of years now. I mm. uh, just never got to it. Uh, this is called Lost Souls Cemetery, also by Autumn Lane. And I really like I really like this one. Um, I thought it's just creepy enough, but not too creepy to creep Mel out because she's not a big fall <laughs> like Halloween no, person. No, Halloween's not my favorite. But it, it's not super creepy. It's a little creepy, which I, I like it a lot. So I'll probably stitch that in the fall as well. Um, I, I think I have the fabric for that one somewhere. Um, let's see. And of course I have the fall oak, which is in that same series, which I'll probably stitch in the fall. Um, I, have lots, I don't know if I'll get all of this fall stuff stitched. Well, but, that's all right. But it's fine. I'm not when really the, worried about that. I mean, that. you have all of these ideas. I think when the moment comes, you'll know what you want to stitch on. Exactly. I, I'll know exactly what I'm going to stitch when, when it kind of comes. Mm -hmm. um, and this I also one. reminded them that Chris, a crisscross stitch usually does a spooky summer stitch along. So so, so I could move some of them in the summer because the summer is yeah. a little lighter for me as yeah. far as ideas. Um, that may or may not happen. I'm not really worried about whether <laughs> they get to them or not. But this is one I've had for kitted up for a while. I think your mom gave no, me. No, we bought this um this one? at Fancy Works when Fancy Works oh, was that's open. Right. Fancy it was Works. the not this past summer, but the summer before when we went to Gen, Gen, Gen Con, Con. We stopped that's at right. Fancy Works. We stopped at Fancy Works when mm -hmm. it was still open. Um this one is an autumnal sampler by Little Robin Designs. Mm -hmm. So I've had that one kitted up for a couple of years now. Mm -hmm. And I think I'm going to probably stitch. I really like this one. It, it's just more of a fall one. I've always loved fall. So, um, And then I have one other kind of Halloween one. It's a Mill Hill kit that I've had for a little while. Uh, Into the Woods by uh, Mill Hill. The, I really like the cats and the lantern. Is this one of the glow-in-the-dark ones? This is one of the glow-in-the-dark mm -hmm. ones. I've never done a glow-in-the-dark. Yeah. So that'll be kind of fun to stitch. Mm -hmm. um, so those are the fall. I only have one firm 
Christmas one besides the Kringle Flying Academy. Mm -hmm. There's another one I might consider, but I'm not as far uh, that far out. I'm, I'm not quite as certain, but I do <laughs> I do want to do the Christmas break uh, Mill Hill kit that I, I have here. Mm, that's cute. There's a few other patterns. They're not Mill Hill that are like looking out from a window that I kind of like. Mm -hmm. So I kind of I don't know. Lately, I've been kind of attracted to those kinds of patterns. Not oh. sure why. Yeah. Um, All right. But those are my my twenty twenty four plans. Mm -hmm. um, they're subject to change based on how I feel. But yeah, but that's a good I think a good pile of potential. A lot of potential. For some you, some of them will get done. Some of them will not. Some of them will probably end up as whips. So. Yeah. Um, I'm looking forward to uh, stitching more projects than one. Uh, mm -hmm. I do enjoy working one or two, but mm -hmm. trying to blend small and large projects together. Because mm -hmm. I have a lot of I have a lot of large projects as patterns that aren't even in, in this list that. I can only keep one or two large ones going at a time. <laughs> yeah, we both spent some time yesterday kind of looking through our patterns. and. Yeah, I spent a lot of time. I have a lot of a lot more patterns than I realized. So mm -hmm. I don't think I'm going to buy any, myself any new patterns this year until we get to the, like the Galleria thing maybe. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think we're planning on doing the low buy year this year. Yeah, so other than that, I'm, I'm just going to focus on patterns I have, mm -hmm. trying not to buy a lot of... Yeah, we both have so much patterns. I have a lot of fabrics. I've got I've got a ton of BMC mm -hmm. flosses, so I'm mm -hmm. just going to try to focus on stuff I already have rather mm -hmm. than buying a lot of haul. Yeah. I might get some given to me at some point, I'm sure, mm -hmm. but I won't be buying a lot. Hopefully. Yeah. Well, I say that, but <laughs> <laughs> you never know. At the start of year, this is our... I started hope. my New Year's resolution. Well, I don't really do New Year's <laughs> resolutions. Resolution. I don't really do New Year's yeah. resolutions, but... This is what I'm intending. We'll see if it actually happens. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I think that's it for my plans. Mm -hmm. um, I know you had some sewing or something you wanted to talk about. Or... Yeah. Um, so I did do some. I was busy in here. Um, I made myself a travel size project bag because all of my project bags are the, you know, this size. And that wasn't going to fit in my carry-on, so I made a small one. <laughs> and I kind of gave it, like, a little hint of Christmas with the green and pink, but it could go for springtime or anytime. So it's great to have this size of a bag now that I can throw in a smaller bag if I'm going out and about. Yeah. I'm a little jealous. I might have her make me one at some point. I could. Her. Actually, I was thinking I have enough fabric of that, um, that fabric that you bought. Which one? The Zelda one? The Zelda one. That's the word. Zelda. Yeah. I have made... enough fabric. The Zelda fabric. I can make you one. Yeah. Because it may be a nice Zelda one. I have a smaller, having a smaller one travel would be nice. I can do that. Um, I'm excited. Uh, uh, speaking of making bags for other people. Also, I made a bunch of bags for my mom for her birthday. Along with the cross stitch piece. Um, I'll insert a picture because I took a picture of them before I wrapped them up. To take them on our adventures. But I made... Five or... Five or six. Six. One of them is one that you've seen because I made two out of that vintage tablecloth. Um, and then there were two that I also made a second one for myself because I had enough fabric to. And didn't you... Oh, yeah. One. So I'm working on a rainbowish quilt for myself. And um, these were all scraps that I had. So I had enough because they were kind of thin and long strips. So I made, basically, they're kind of matching bags with purple. These are all scraps from the quilt that I was making. Um, and then this was a fabric that I had gotten for the backing, but it's not going to work. So Didn't, you, did you, didn't you also make one with one of her unfinished projects that she wasn't going to I finish? did, which they'll see in the picture. There, uh, My mom had restarted Rose Quaker. I think that's the name of it. Three times. So this was the first, the first, first attempt. The first attempt. She had been stitching it on Ada and decided it wasn't her jam. So, yeah, I just added initials onto it because there was kind of a blank space. But yeah, I did turn that into a project back for her. I thought so. Mm -hmm. And then there was a the Little Women one. My mom and I have a tradition of watching Little Women every year at Christmas. Um, so, I made a bag with the Little Women fabric by Jill Howarth. And then the other one that I also made a duplicate of for myself is this uh, wintry bag. This is fabric by St. E. Gervais called Rival Winter or Hello Winter or something like that. I thought it was super cute with all these birds and wintry. So something wintry will go in there. I also finished in September. I had made a quilt top 
Um, oh, yeah. I finished it. It's a quilt, though. <laughs> it turned out great. Um, this is from the, I'm going to look down because I have the tag here, The Cheer and Merriment um, by Moda Fabric, um, Fabric Line. And so I quilted it um, because I wanted to try using spray basting. That was something that I hadn't done that I thought might be more helpful for me than pin basting, and it was. It was so much easier for me to quilt this. This is just a lap size quilt. It's small. We've had it on our couch. Um, but yeah, I'm pleased with the way that it turned out. I did kind of a scrappy binding with some of the scraps that I had left over. This was a jelly roll quilt. Um, the jelly roll jam by Fat Quarter Shop. It's a free pattern that you can get. And they also have a really great video tutorial on YouTube. And with the scraps from the quilt, I made this little thing, which if you have been following my 12 Days of Snow Friends hashtag, I kind of use this as a background for all of that. So originally I made this for our kitchen island, but then it just stayed in my craft room and was used in <laughs> photos <laughs> this month. Um, but that was good. And then I also made a quilt for Michael for she Christmas. She did. I had no idea what she was doing. I had a little bit of a theme for the gifts that I gave him this year. Yes. Well, I had... I, had, I usually make a, a Christmas list for my mom every year, and yeah. on there I had included a tent. Yeah. And so that that was the only thing I was figuring camping related. I didn't think I would get it, but she got me the tent. I got him the tent. And the whole, so many of the themes for the rest of my gifts from her were camping related. Yeah, I got him a bunch of other things that we needed for her. And none of them camping. were on the list except for the, the tent. Well, I thought if I got him the tent, <laughs> we wouldn't have the other things we needed for the camping. Well, yeah, I know. I, I, I figured <laughs> I would have to buy other stuff, and I was like, I'll just start with that. And then Mel got a lot of stuff for us. So. Yeah. So this this quilt was So one of I those. said we might need a cozy quilt for the camping times. So I found this fabric called Love You S'more by Riley Blake. And it turned out super cute. I followed the same jelly roll jam pattern and made a quilt. So you can see the fabric is kind of more campy, cute. And then on the fabric, I used some minky. It's my first time using a minky fabric. Um, I got it at Joann's, and I think it'll be nice and cozy. It's and, and the fire. it's nice and thin so that it doesn't go like it doesn't go, it won't go down onto our boots if they're muddy and stuff. Yeah, this one I made a square, and this one I kind of made more of a longer rectangle. That way we can kind of have it over our laps if we're sitting next to each other on the folding chairs. And then or, and then it won't be getting dirty down below. Not have to get dirty below. So. But I think it's nice and cozy. Yes, it's gonna be great. <laughs> we're gonna definitely do some camping this year. So yeah. I'm looking forward to that and using the blanket. Yeah, that she gave me so. <laughs> Thank you for the gift. You're welcome. I had no idea. She was busy <laughs> so much in her craft room. I had no idea what I she was, was making. I was busy. He even helped me spray baste the bottom layer. And I had no idea. Because it was windy that day and I needed a little assistance with the holding it down. Yeah. But that was my sewing. That was her sewing. Um, so Plus the pillows that I did. The pillow finishes. The pillow finishes. The, mm. the one she helped me with and the yeah. other ones. So yeah. Uh, so yeah um, I guess that's... Is that it? That's it. Wow. Um... So uh, I guess we'll, the only thing we have left is our board games, but if you're not really here for the board games, mm -hmm. um, I just want to thank everybody for, for being here with us today and yeah. share, sharing all of our stitching journey and life events. Yeah. Um, we are grateful for all of you and always look forward to seeing your comments and, mm -hmm. and just interacting with the community. It's been great. So, yeah. We're uh, so grateful to have you uh, in our lives as a part of our stitching journey. Yes. This has been a wonderful adventure. So yeah. Um, so if you're not here for the games and you're heading off, uh, thank you. And we'll look forward to seeing you in our next video, hopefully. Yeah. We hope you have a good month. And we'll be back at the beginning of February. Yep. Beginning of February. So um, have a, a great next month. And we'll go ahead and take a short break while we re rearrange for our game yeah. section. All right. Great. All right. So we have recomposed ourselves. Uh, welcome back, back to those who are still with us. And um, if you're new here, we love board games. That's our other shared hobby. Yes. So yeah. at the end of our videos, we kind of talk about some of the games that we played over the last month. And this one will be also be uh, the one we played the most over the whole year. Yeah. So we thought we would start with the, our reigning game of the year. I think we had 60 something plays. We had 60 something plays, which was way far more than any of the games. I think the closest one after that had 30 something. 20. Or 20 something. 21. Mm -hmm. Which was Spirit Island, which has always been one of my favorites. But this mm -hmm. is the one for throughout the whole year we played the most of and it's one that we played the most of last month yes so it fits both categories yes <laughs> so this is the box for it this yeah is, 
Last time we showed Wingspan, we showed you the traditional box. So if you buy the game at Target or your local game store, that's the box that you would see is the blue one. Yep, and this is the, the box if you buy the big... We bought the giant, huge box to hold the game and every expansion. Yes, and it actually has a really nice design on the inside to show you how it's supposed to lay out, mm -hmm. um, which is really nice. And it fits all the different expansions. It's so great. And it has all these trays for all the components and... It's brilliant. If you like this game and you're intending on getting all of the expansions, eventually it's, it's worth they're being. still coming out. They're still developing them. But I, I know the first time this box came out, we actually didn't get it because it sold out. We missed the first two go rounds of the. So obviously, it's very popular. Yeah, we kind of know the. It's definitely round. worth getting the big box if you're interested in this game. Mm -hmm. um, I think we talked a lot about Wingspan. Yeah, before, Wingspan but... is a game where you're collecting birds. Um, you have kind of a... Three different habitats. Tableau in front of you with three different habitats. And it's a engine building game. So you're getting birds that are helping to improve... What you can do. What you can do on your turns. Yeah. So it, it's you know, it's about playing the birds, you know, laying eggs. And there's, there's different things that give you points throughout the game. Mm -hmm. Whether it's the birds themselves or the eggs are points or your tucking cards, which are flocking or eating. Mm -hmm. So it, it kind of combines a lot of the, the general mechanics of what birds do mm -hmm. into the game. And... Each of the, the cards tells you a little bit about the birds, and there's uh, mm -hmm. so it's kind of fun for that regard as well. My brother has the version on Steam, and if you play on there, you can actually hear the sounds that the birds make, which is really cool. Yeah, um, so yeah, it's it's kind of good for learning about the birds, especially if you have uh, old, older kids, not like really young kids. Yeah, because there is a lot of reading, there's a lot of reading, mm -hmm. but it's it's a lot of fun and it's just a lot of fun as a general game. I mm -hmm. mean, even if it wasn't about birds, we love it, it's our most played game. Yeah, um, and it plays with a lot of people, too. It's like, yes, with the newest expansion, you can play with up to seven? Seven, maybe? I think. I think it's seven people. Yeah. So it, it fits really well for larger crowds, too, which not a lot of games necessarily do. Mm -hmm. a lot we've of never played it at that count. We haven't, but you could. If you yeah, could. you could. Um, I think we've played it at six. It's about the biggest, maybe, or five. 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 Mm -hmm. um, so that, that's Wingspan. Uh, definitely love the game, obviously. Um, worth worth getting if you're inter interested in that kind of thing. Yes. Um this is one of our new games mm -hmm. that I got for Christmas mm -hmm. called Trailblazers. See, it went with the hiking theme. It did go with the hiking theme. Um, <laughs> and this one is, is quite different from most it's of the other games. It's a puzzly game. It's a puzzly game. Cause so basically what you're doing in the game is you're building trails in a park. Hiking trails, uh, biking trails, and kayaking trails. Mm -hmm. And so each round, you'll add a new base camp for the different type of trail you're building, and mm -hmm. they can they all can, you're trying to connect from a starting point back to that same camp. You're trying to make loops. You're trying to make loops, so the people can go and enjoy the the the, the hike the hikes or whatever you're mm -hmm. building for them. So it's it's really a quick game. It's easy to learn. So each of the cards um, that you're playing has little line segments on it. So you're trying to make these little loops and swoops and trails to enjoy and you can overlap cards that are already played the only thing you can't overlap is the camps mm -hmm. so you can lay over top to try to change the routes of your different uh, trails and it's tricky because you you basically get essentially six cards um each round before mm -hmm. you put in your trail and there's, there's four, four rounds. rounds um and it goes much quicker like as most games do than you realize and you have figure you have this plan and it's you're not nowhere near finished <laughs> before the end of the game is almost there no. so um, the first time we played, my dad creamed us because he picked up on what we were supposed to do way faster than we did. Yes, I think I ended up with three <laughs> points in the first game. So I was focused. Yeah. I was focused on the one of the goals was building this huge loop around stuff, and I was like, I don't care. I'm building this loop, and I still haven't got that loop built. <laughs> um, but I had a lot of fun, even if I didn't win that game. Yeah. Um, but we picked up on it after that and got better scores yeah and since we came home we've played it several more times yeah so it, it's a fun game and mm -hmm. it's it's camping themed mm -hmm. um and we do have a couple of games we don't have boxes the other for. cool thing about this game is that they've made the cards with material that you can bring it camping well, yeah. they're easy to clean that's right they won't get soggy it's a good it. camp uh, travel yeah so game. it'll be a good uh travel game too i forgot about that that's mm -hmm. a good point mm -hmm. um so yeah uh trailblazers great game um we have a couple of games we don't have boxes for, but we have pictures of Yeah, there were games that we played a bunch when we were in Florida visiting uh, my brother and sister-in-law. And we played those quite a bit. Yeah, um, so the two games that we played the most while we were there were Color Brain, which is a party game, 
Uh, you're in teams. You're in teams. And there's questions, and the answers to the questions are all colors. So so, so each team has a group of, I don't know, like 11 colors or something like that. Yeah. Eight colors. I forget how many colors you get. Maybe nine. Maybe nine colors. And so somebody will, will serve as the, um, they'll read the card aloud. Well, they have the answer covered. They have the answer covered. The, so the per, the there's a little that. window where you read what the question is. And it'll say a number. And it'll have whatever the question is. Mm -hmm. So, like, it'll be the colors of the Brazilian flag and, mm -hmm. and then four. Mm -hmm. And so your team has to decide which four colors go with that particular flag. Mm -hmm. And everybody puts down. If everybody has it right, that card goes to the center and nobody gets any points that round. Mm -hmm. And it, But it adds on to the next round. Mm -hmm. If one per team has it right and the other one doesn't, they get the points that for that one. Mm -hmm. And so it goes around until everybody has... Uh, Everybody has... There's a certain point threshold. Point Once threshold, someone reaches that, the win. game's over. But and We had a lot of fun. It was a lot of fun. Um, <laughs> it, it's uh, definitely interesting when you play when you're half awake versus fully awake. <laughs> is what we found. I mean, I was half awake when I was playing in one of the nights, and <laughs> they asked me a really common, easy, you know, what is a dreamsicle. Yeah, what What are the two colors of a dreamsicle? And I was like, dreamsicle? What is a dreamsicle? <laughs> uh, I was, clearly, I'm not a late night person. Um <laughs> But it was also funny because your, your brother had uh, some mishap. There was a question about the colors of Skittles, and he thought it was M&M's. So yeah. he picked M&M colors. So and it, was so um, yeah, it was fun. It was a fun game. It was a lot of fun. Um, a fun way to spend our time together. Yes. Another game that we played a whole bunch is Mysterium Park. Um, it is a game kind of like Clue, where you're trying to figure out the murderer and the location. Yes. That's really the only similarity because there's no board involved. At least not a, 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 there's a, a board. There's not a board where you're moving around. So it, yeah. basically the idea is that one person plays as the ghost. Yes. The, person the murdered murder. person. And they're trying to give clues to the other people uh, to tell them who, it, who who did it. Who didn't do it. Or who didn't do it. And so, But the clues are all in the shape of dreams. Which are artwork cards. Like artwork cards. And so you'll have a tableau of different possible people that to mm -hmm. choose from. And you have a little color marker, and so he gives you up really up to seven cards he could give you. Yeah. And all of those different cards relate somehow to one of those people on that board. But they're so wacky, it's really very difficult to say, what what was he trying to clue in on this particular card right. that goes with that? Is it the crayons? Because there's a crayon on this picture. Because they're all crazy pictures. Or is it the light? There's a light in this one. Yeah. Or is it... There's an orange. Is he trying to tell me it's about food? Because this person wants has food things in their picture. Yeah. And so every, he does this for every person. He gets new cards and, and he keeps giving out clues. And once he, all the cards have been distributed, you have to decide which person you think he was trying to tell you to go to. And in this particular version, there's you have to get the person and the place before you can go on to the final round. Mm -hmm. Everybody has to. Mm -hmm. If no, and Not everybody gets to that by the end of six... Rounds? Yeah, I think you have six turns to figure it out. If you don't, nobody, not everybody does it by the end of six rounds. You don't even get to go to the final. You just lose. You lose. But if you do, then you go to the final round. The people that were not selected each round become the possibilities. Mm -hmm. And then you get two clues at the final round. You have to decide which of the groups of three, uh, sets of two mm -hmm. are it. So it's it's a lot of fun because everything's so abstract and wacky. You don't. Well, and the players, not the ghosts, but the other players can talk amongst themselves like, I don't understand what this person's trying to tell me. Yes. What do you think it is? It's because it's a cooperative game. You're not really <laughs> working against each other. You're right. all trying to help each other figure this out. Yeah. And there's no real rational way to kind of come to a full conclusion. Right. Because it also depends on who the ghost is and what their thought process is. And yeah, you have to think like the ghost things. thinks. And the ghost has to try to think like you would The think. only game that we won, I was the ghost. She was. Every other game. And the watched. funniest thing when you are the ghost is you'll you'll put the clues out there. And they'll initially say exactly what you were thinking, but then move on from that thought and think of something else. <laughs> and you, you know, can't say anything. And you can't say anything. You're like, you know what? That second way makes sense, but that's not at all what I meant. <laughs> I meant the first thing. Go back to that. Right. But you can't do that. Yeah. So it's real, a lot of fun. Um, gets really wacky at times. It was a fun party game. I enjoyed it a lot. I mm -hmm. like that. I like that version of Clue, I think, best. I mean, Clue's okay, but that's... Uh, uh, Mysterium. Mysterium. We've also played the regular Mysterium. Mysterium. The Red Mysterium has an, a third thing you, you have to You also have guess. to figure out the weapon, and it's timed. And it's timed. Which, this one isn't timed. So I think I like that aspect better. The time kind of makes it a little more pressure. Also, it has more of a generic 
theme, you're in like a mansion. Yeah. Whereas this one is all circus. All themed, circus. So theme. that's the thing that you're into. Circus, creepy circus. So I enjoyed this one a lot. Mm-hmm. Uh, that was that was probably my favorite game that we played today. I, I like the color theme one as well, but this one mm-hmm. was probably my favorite of the mm-hmm. three. I mean, we played a few other games, but not as many times as these two. Right. Um, and then we wanted to give an honorable mention to our favorite holiday game. Yes. Um, this is one I, I've had for a while. Or, Which is Peanuts Yahtzee. Peanuts Yahtzee. Everybody, most people play Yahtzee. The only bit, real difference in this one is that all the dice have peanuts themed. Yeah, I think they have it on the side. Do they? Oh, yes, they yeah. Do. Those so are what the dice. Those are what the dice have on them. And it's just a regular Yahtzee game like normal, but mm-hmm. it has the nice theme of Snoopy and, and Christmas. So. Yeah, we played it with my parents on Christmas Eve and it was fun. Yeah. I think I won. She did. She got <laughs> she got Yahtzee. I did not get Yahtzee. Your mom got Yahtzee. We couldn't record the Yahtzee. She might have had a close yeah, second. Yeah, because she had already crossed it off. She had crossed it off. That's what happens when you do sometimes. Mm, but yeah, but yeah. it was fun. We had a great time with it. Mm-hmm. So um, I think that's it for our actual games. That we yeah, played. those were the games we played the most this In month. December. And then, the, of course, the year one was one we also played this month. So mm-hmm. um, I think that's it for games. Yeah, we're looking forward to more games in the year ahead. Yes, there'll be lots of new games, I'm sure, this coming year. Yeah, um, we'll I be, think we're planning on going to Gen Con again. We're going to go to Gen Con again, so there'll probably be some new games from that. In August. In August, and, you know, birthdays and that come up, so mm. there'll be new games at various times. But yeah. we don't usually buy a lot of games ourselves, not anymore except for maybe Gen Con, but yeah, we do buy them at Gen Con. But you're going to a game convention, how can you not? Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, I, think, no, I think that's it for us uh, for today, mm-hmm. but... If you've stayed us with us this long, we want to thank you for, for sharing our game hobby with us as well as our cross-stitch hobbies. Mm-hmm. Um, hope you have a good one, you know, next month mm-hmm. and some wonderful times with family and friends over the next month. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we hope you get to spend time doing the things that you love with the people that you love. Yes, and we'll look forward to seeing you guys again next month when we come with up for the next video. Yeah. So until then, have a wonderful time and we will see you soon, hopefully. Yeah, Bye. love you. Bye.